At first, the dean of women was wary of the concept. The dean had a good many uh, scruples about this, and it was necessary to persuade them or to let them do it. First, she thought they were too young to manage property and account. As she thought that it might become a hangout for radicals of all sorts, which had to some degree turned out to be true. The dean got behind the co-op as the media reported on its unique interracial nature, and she promoted it as a model for the Wisconsin idea. In February 1943, the co-op was officially opened in a building on Langdon Street. Green Lantern Eating Co-op moved into the basement of the new groves. Those first years were rough, though. In keeping with the university's and local parentis supervision policy, Groves was required to have live-in house parents. Some members of the first group to move in didn't get along with their house parents so well. This was at a time when uh, communism at the, in the university was much more respectable than it is now. We were allies of Russia. Um, there was a fairly active student communist movement. Of about 25 girls, there were about uh, possibly as many as 10 in our house who were um, of the communist persuasion. And this created a very deep difficulty in Rao, not only in itself, but because Don Schwartz, who came from the Minnesota range and had experience with co-ops in Minnesota, was deeply and bitterly anti-communist. They had a very um, warm argument the first semester. And the second semester, the communists all resigned and left. The house proved to be very unique on campus. Although the co-op was a women's social organization, it was nothing like a sorority. Political speakers and discussions were organized regularly to educate the community and household on everything from consumer co-ops to universal military training. They also apparently picked a badger beauty for the beauty contest, saying, so what if we have different conceptions than the judges? Structurally, the house was much like Rochdale Men's Co-op, with an elected board, house meetings in which members were able to make decisions concerning their house, and elected officers who carried out everything from membership to finances to enforcing rules. But uh, as far as groves, um, it was really hard because you were supposed to be getting good grades. I was supposed to be getting good grades, and I wasn't because I found it much more interesting to sit and talk to people in, in the groves living room or Green Manor. Groves moved to 625 North Henry, still in the Langdon neighborhood, then in 1946 decided to buy a house at 1104 West Johnson. When the property was first sold to us, it was sold by a real estate agent uptown. But I have it by rumor that um, he was fined and suspended from the real estate board for selling a, uh, a house for mixed living on Johnson Street. It was regarded by the people on Johnson Street as a slap in the face to see uh, Eagles going into the house right on Johnson Street itself with white people. We held a prolonged hearing in uh, Lathrop Hall, and the irate neighbors and the lawyers wanted the dean to show cause why we shouldn't be removed as a nuisance. The dean stood by us royally. And the thing about Groves was, uh, it, since it had so many African-American women living there, the word spread that this was a good place for African-American women to live. And it wasn't true of very many places in Madison at that time, you know. Um, so we had to have this sort of a affirmative action policy. We didn't call it that, of course, but we had to make sure that there were some other people represented, like girls, that's what we call them, girls from Black River Falls. And so I was one of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs>
The effect of World War II on the campus co-op movement was devastating. Rochdale Men's Co-op was dissolved in May of 1943 when its membership was called to service. The assets of the co-op, along with those of Congo Huntington Eating Co-op, were kept in a fund until the end of the war for the re-establishment of co-ops. Green Lantern stopped operation around 1943 and most of the other eating co-ops closed during the war. The houses of the Badger Club were vacated and women took them over and kept their co-op structures in place. The war ended and college enrollment at UW swelled as two years worth of vets came back to continue college. The returning vets were seasoned with war experiences and inspired by the European co-op movements. Green Lantern was restarted in March 1946 in the basement of the new Groves House and Congo Eating Co-op a few weeks later, presumably with the money from the fund that had been set up. Wayland, Catholic, and Three Squares Eating Co-ops were also re-established. The Inner Co-op Council was reorganized, and on their agenda was to set up a co-op book exchange, an overseas relief service under CARE, and a series of educational meetings and lectures. The ICC included Wayland, Babcock House, Groves, Green Lantern, St. Paul's, Three Squares, Anderson, and Tabard. The housing co-ops took a little longer to re-establish than the eating co-ops. Rochdale Men's Co-op didn't come back from the dead until five years after the war ended. Dick Thorell and Lloyd Barbie helped restart the house in 1950. Groves got some of the former Rochdale owners like John Reith and I think a fellow named Wetlaufer, Don Wetlaufer, to uh, be involved in support and supportive of getting Rochdale restarted. And so uh, that's what happened. I told you I got the name. Is either Father Rochdale. Papa. I like father better, but I know a lot of people call me Papa. I had to go along. With the return of vets from the war, the UW faced a serious housing shortage and set up temporary housing at three different locations. These complexes were similar to what is called co-housing today, with separate dwellings for families, an elected decision-making council, a community building, and a cooperative grocery store. Badger Village was located at the Badger Munitions Plant. Other complexes were at Camp Randall and Truax Field. Thousands of people thrived in these semi-cooperative complexes for several years before the post-war enrollment returned to normal and the communities were dissolved. Right after the war in 47-49, I was there and we started a food co-op and uh, also it was in a sense a, a kind of a housing thing and it was the biggest mix of age, class, race, color, creed, and everything that you could possibly have. And there was absolutely a wonderful, wonderful mix and very enlightening. We had a great books group and all kinds of other things, but it was all relatively cooperative, including this food co-op. It was a very radical group. We had even had Norman Thomas out there. And uh, McCarthy talked, and all of them sometimes on the same panel. It was wonderful. 